Okay, here we go. Kai Tau Mai Te Maramatanga, Kai Tau Mai Te Rangamari, Kai Tau Mai Te Kaha Miti, Wai Wakaro, Mo Tani, Kau Papa, Pili E, Tai Ki E. Let's be grounded in clarity, let's be peaceful, let's be strong and considerate for this purpose. Bind us together, so it is. Okay, how about item six, confirmation of minutes. So we want to move that the confirmation of minutes be accepted. Moved board member Hughes, seconded by board member Armstrong. Surely there's some discussion in those minutes that we'd like to talk about. Uh, uh, discussion? Oh, the only sorry, I do. Um, Rise. is arising from those minutes, maybe. I was wondering if we should note under the uh, discretionary fund for the Motuka Art Group. I don't think we have noted here, but they requested five, but they gave 550, so maybe we can send a put a wee note as to why. No, 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 but um, we had a discussion last week. In case anyone sees it and queries. Yeah, Councillor Walker. Oh, sure. Uh, just wondering about matters arising from those that didn't get addressed last month that were meant to be addressed this month. And that would be um, something that was raised at public forum. Chair's report, gone for the members. So if that related to the letter, there was some confusion of it being but left the light of this meeting or not to lie. So that I've left it pretty open for the Chair's report for that to be So yeah. I think it would be a place. So with those um, discussion on the minutes, that's pretty good. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Gets carried. So we now go to item eight point, must be one. So the election of a chair. So before I vacate the seat, I, I just want to, I guess I just want to give some observations of the difficulties that it has been as a councillor to also be on the community board. So um, a key part of the community board's role is to advocate and to, I guess, question and hold council um, to somewhat to task in terms of delivery services for Matuika. Um, as ward councillors, we're often in a dilemma of that district-wide stuff plus um, the Matuika bit, but I think it's a, it's a struggle for somebody to sit in this chair as a community board chair and also um, push back on what council has decided, because obviously the three ward councils are part of that decision. So um, thank you for the time that it's been there and, and tolerated that, but it, for the community board's success, I think it's time for a new chair. And that may well be a councillor, but it's not this councillor. Um, and I just want to, um, while I got this opportunity to speak, is that the elected members had a workshop on strategy and purpose and some values um, early, earlier in your um, training. Um, I'd probably encourage you, as you go through Code of Conduct and the other bits, to revisit that, relook at that again, because um, the way that this board gets things done is for the majority of the support to agree on things. Um, and without having a single vision in that, in that supportive and that respect in the, um, to be able to have robust conversations, this board will struggle. So um, you had a document that said this is how you um, wanted to work in that, and I don't actually know if we've probably even read it, but um, you know, I, I just urge the board to spend some time under the new chair and regrouping and, and getting that together, and I'm sure that will happen. So with that, can I call for nominations for chair? Board member Hughes. I would like to nominate myself. I mean, no. <laughs> um, I'd like to nominate as chair, deputy chair. Nice, right. Graham. So you're second day. Board member Armstrong. Are there any other nominations? So what I'm going to do is, so we have a nomination for Trina Graham to be the chair of the Motueka Community Board. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. Congratulations and carried. <laughs> Well done. Um, so through Mr. Kirby, as we pass the, uh, do you want to address the deputy chair role now? I'll do that next. So um, thank you. And also just before 
before we call for nominations for deputy chair, I'd like to thank um, you, Brent, for your time in this space. Um, it's been really good seeing you in action, and because um, I'm quite new to this this area, you articulate really well and you carry really well. So I appreciate that, and I'd also like to acknowledge David for for leading us uh, in the very beginning. So. Um, although it does seem like musical cheers, so I hope that for 2024 and onwards we will we will settle. Um, so I'd like to call nominations for deputy chair role, please. Yes, or we will choose. I'd like to nominate, not myself. Um, Ms. Hutt as Ms. Hutt as deputy chair. Do I have a do I? Have a seconder or do I ask for I've got a seconder for I don't mind seconding um board member Hart. I'm assuming I can do that. Uh any other nominations? Deputy Chair. Okay, so we'll move that uh board member Hart is deputy chair. Uh all those in favour say aye. Aye. Anyone against? We abstain from voting as a councillor. No, we actually didn't in the last round, but all good. Yeah. So carried. So congratulations. Mm. Next, next, next year you'll be over here. All right. Okay, so I've got to carry things on now. So um we don't have any apologies. Um we will open now. Oh, actually, first I just want to quickly check if there's any declarations of interest. Good, um, and uh, we'll open the public forum. So we have got five speakers. Is Isabel Monaghan here? Kia ora. Welcome up. We're going to be talking about how in the park. <laughs> My name is Isabel, and I live in Total Park Avenue. And I was talking to the ladies in the council office with Emma a few weeks ago. My husband and I have two small dogs. We walk them twice a day, always without fail of picking up poo. We gratefully uh, appreciate the poo bags, dispensers and bins, although it would be nice if the bags were decomposable. Unfortunately, picking up poo after dogs is something that people fail to do, even to the point of refusing a bag that, that is offered to them. Cons consequently, one sees excrement on pathways, grassways, on verges, and even on the beach. So a couple of weeks ago, my small 11-month-old Snauzer decided she was going to pull her lead and she went into the bush up in Totrick Park and came out with a bonus. And that is a human poo, which to me is really un not acceptable. Discussing the event as an isolated incident I wonder what we can do as, or what you can do as a council. Can we be more proactive in patrolling areas, signage, provision of poo bags and bins in all reserves, or even given the damage done in the green area by a four by four, could the council see their way Put up cameras. That's my discussion, and I would love some feedback. Well, is there any? Um... Yeah, somewhat. If you're not um, sort of familiar with speaking at public forum, we are very restricted in what. We can say uh, I understand to, that to, to yes. you at the moment. So, so, um, but you have clarified you would like the council to provide more 
uh, cameras in public areas such as dog walking areas? Well, I, I honestly think it would be very good because, I mean, when you're out there and you're dog walking and you see people not picking up poo, or when you even offer them a bag, they just totally ignore you. Have you contacted the council and uh, as to a service request? I have. You have, because th there is an enforcement division with the Tasman District Council, which I think um, would, would be more than happy to help. So, uh, yeah, if you've made a, made a service request, uh, we'll ensure that it gets passed on. Is that it? Yeah. So what, what happens from the principal is... Um, Can you... Sorry, sorry. We discuss later on in the um, in our agenda yeah. and then any outcomes, you'll get an email thanking you for coming along and if there's any outcomes from our discussion. I look forward to hearing from the council. Thank you. Have we got um, Ron Argue? Keep them to with your beautiful calendars. Ron Argue from Keep Otawaki Beautiful, and we're selling calendars, as you've probably seen, in New World. And unfortunately, we lost our favourite spot because New World took all the challenge support, so we put to the side. So we're getting a bit desperate to plug the final lot off. And so that's why I'm here. And also, we lost our star salesman, um, David Ogilvy. You might all know that he's had a hip operation and he's it was very successful when I saw him last Sunday, but he, he used to move a lot of these. And uh, yeah, there's, there's 12 photos on the back there from this area, the resurgence and even an aurora and that sort of thing. So after this meeting, I'll be over here with a whole stack of these. I haven't, um, I've only got change. I haven't, haven't got uh, any credit card facilities or anything like that, but uh, yeah. You're very welcome if you buy one of these. <laughs> how, how much are the kind of $10 each, the same as last year. They haven't gone up. <laughs> and where can um, people find them in the public? Like we, They can't get oh, one today. Um, the Eyesight, Muses, and I think Toad have them. Yeah, thanks for asking that. <laughs> Lovely. I've just got a question for the board. Oh, clear. Yeah. Um, I'm going over with a friend to the Tarkaka market on Saturday and the Ottawaka market here on Christmas Eve. So I'll touch base with you if you want me to take some to sell on your behalf. Oh, thank you. I'm more than happy. We've got a stall anyway, so. Okay, right, thanks. Okay, that's thank all. You. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Matthias Schaefer. Uh, from time to time, I get these kind of rates invoices from TDC, and in the past, I had an issue, and I sent a letter to TDC to clarify this, and another letter, and another one, but I never got a response. And then there's an email address, then I sent them an email, and I got a response, quote, the council considered it has responded appropriately and will not corresponding with you further in relation to your claims, which is a bit weird because I haven't received a response before. So I called them with this phone number that's here on top and talked a bit on the phone with the lady, explained my case, but then again, she said everything has responded to, which is a bit weird. So, and I asked at what date did you respond and ask a few other questions. And then finally, she didn't give an answer, but she hung up on the phone, which I think it's not appropriate. So I called again, but was not able to talk to someone from the rates team, but instead I got a text message on my phone back. Good morning, Matthias. In response to your call on 22nd November, we were uh, only responding in writing regards the rates team, which is like back to square one because I tried a lot of writing before. Um, however, a week after that incident, the TDC took $2,200 out of my bank account based on that rates invoice, which I wanted to clarify. And part of this was for fees and penalties, which is a bit strange. So now I'm having this damage and I cannot do anything about this because letters are not responded to, phone calls are not working, and staff doesn't provide any names anymore in their correspondence, so I cannot file a complaint. 
So the only tool that is left is that I speak at a public forum. Uh, but even that was under attack. I wanted to give a speech last week at the full council meeting, but the mayor decided that I'm not allowed to show the material that I wanted to present last week. And the most frustrating part about this is that these kind of incidents are not only happening to me, but also to a lot of other people in our community. The ones that are labeled violent, despite the fact they don't threaten anyone. The ones that are labeled not complying with the law, despite the fact not being convicted of any wrongdoing. The ones that are labeled having ongoing fantasies, despite the fact speaking the truth. I've heard so many people that are unhappy with the local government, and many of them completely have no trust anymore when it comes to the Tasman District Council. This is really concerning because the Minister of Local Government said, Councils are accountable to their communities for their actions and decisions. At least in my experience, this seems totally detached from reality. So I'm here today to make an offer to the people of Tasman. I'm willing to start a group, an entity, an organization, however you want to call it, that acts as a watchdog for the local government. I want to make sure that this local government stays within their boundaries. I want to see transparency. I want to see accountability. I want to see decision-making that is based on democratic principles. And I believe we need such a group that scrutinizes the local government because I know personally how hard it can be if you're on, on your own and fighting against an organization with hundreds of people and an almost endless amount of resources and powers that they can use, and in my case, have used. So feel free everyone to join me on that mission. Everyone is welcome, everyone is invited, because I know many people have limited time, limited resources, uh, don't have the skills, or a lot of them are simply afraid to speak up about their incidents with TDC. Come to me after the meeting, talk to me, you can ask the community board, they have my contact details, and I'm happy to talk to everyone who thinks the same, that there is an issue with this local government. I believe if we come together as a group, we are much stronger and can turn this around and we can bring a real strong sense of democracy back to Tasman. Thank you. Um, Vice, Vice, do you want to table your... Oh, yes. Were there any questions from us? Thank you. Ivan Fori, Zola Chokesan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, members and councillors. Um, celebration time. I think it's Kiri Hiri Kiri Himeti. So Kiri Himeti to everyone. And I have a celebration to share because of work done by one councillor probably a year and a half ago. And the new screens are ample. Um, it's going to exemplify what we've got. On top of this roof, there are 156 kilowatts of production, 290 panels. And right now we're sitting in a solarized building. You can feel the difference. It's not coal fired, it's totally solar fired. And currently we've got 69 kilowatts coming off the roof, exporting to the grid at 48.6. And that is what is called raw data. That in itself is fine, but uh, data can become quite boring pretty quickly. So if Emma could flick on to, um, I will share the last one. So part of what my, I do as a monitoring consultant is bring to, from the solar industry, how to showcase the solar you've got. Because I have asked a number of people and then nobody knows that there's solar on the roof, naturally, because you can't see it. But, but the benefits of that are massive. This particular, if you can click on long, thanks. Solar Analytics is a company that is purely science driven in the solar industry, and it produces the, oh, can you put down to the bottom, or to log in? Oh, it's not happy. Okay, can we go to the community? So, Solar Analytics does it takes that raw data and puts it into a form that we can use. So, if on the one hand you saw a screen that just had data versus a screen which is going to say what the solar does, 
we're going to see that the Cairns City Council that are currently going through all that problems with the rain, the Cairns City Council have got have converted all that raw data to show what it practically does. So the these are fairly fast moving screens, but the one that you will see down the bottom here. Now I am so down here, just concentrate on these ones here. And it's going to come up with the, what what the system actually does and how many cars and or trees it's saving. So we currently we've done a library in Richmond. Yesterday we put the solar loggers on into the unit there and we're now getting the data has to populate the screens and in the new year and the graham fox's leadership we'll be putting together what it'll have <coughs> like that'll be the wastewater treatment plant at brightwater showing what how many cars have been taken off the road and what the production is now it's not a dead screen it goes in five minute segments so if you're sitting <laughs> in the re reception area down at richmond you can see that as it is. So the subtlety is that Tasman District are promoting their commitment to sustainability. So now he's having it on the roof alone. Put it out there so that people can, can see it. I've had a little, you know, little checks on the street here and say, Do you know there's solar here? Oh, where is it? I said on the roof. I said, excuse me. People are really interested in it. So that's what we are celebrating today. And if I may, I'm paying this forward. So the hardware girls in the office. Now uh, there's three. One for you, one for you, and one for the office. And I have some spare. This is paying it forward. This is to Councillor Walker for all her good work. And also that's for last year, and this is for this year, next year. Because we have the dog control act coming up. So I'm paying it forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. So soon that will happen and you'll be able to see it at any of the screens around the Tasman District, Murchison, and or Old Bay for me, the whole lot. So there we go. So congratulations to the council and thanks for making a great year. Thank you. Any more esteem? <laughs> Kristen Schaefer. Hi. So today I would like to speak about public interest. I would like to ask the community board to advocate for guidance given to members of the public who present matters via the public forum or express their interests in having meetings held in public. When one registers for a public forum speaking slot, we are given guidance as to what cannot be shared or about restrictions on how to share certain views. I note that the latest email I received said, council standing orders state that any issue, idea or matter raised in a public forum must fall within the terms of reference of that meeting. I understand that the standing orders say that if a member of the public specifically raises an issue that is on the agenda of that particular meeting, one should be given the ability to speak on the topic. I don't think there's any restrictions on general topics for presentations to the Motueka Community Board. As to my understanding, the scope of the Motueka Community Board is not limited to a narrower topic like the Environment and Regulatory Committee, for example but is instead there to obtain views on topics of interest for the community. If my understanding is not correct, could you please let me know? Further, I shared my views and input either during meetings from full council or the Motueka Community Board, in person or via email of, uh, to councillors or community board members. However, I'm not seeing formal responses to the matters I raised and wonder if there was any procedure that would be provided to members of the public so that they can understand whether or not they will be given a formal response to the matters they raised. This would also help to understand whether or not to speak, whether or not it makes sense for me to speak because preparing speeches may take some time and I would prefer that the time and effort I put in my speeches does receive some acknowledgement or feedback. Otherwise, I'm starting to wonder what the point is to speak at a public forum. I noticed that one of the topics I brought up at council meeting, namely that I would like to count that would act, 
that I would like council to provide publicly whether or not the, the members of the executive leadership team, other than the CEO or COO, were in fact officer roles or melee manager roles. I did not receive an answer to that question other than a TDC lawyer stating that any staff was an officer. However, in the last, latest agenda of full council, I noticed that council was informed a new role is being created, namely the chief financial officer role, which would confirm what I was wondering, namely that the manager roles are man manager roles and not automatically officer roles. I would like to inform you as a community board that there's a public interest for clarification and transparent information. And I would love to see that a member of the public would be given an information about the matter once they have raised it, or at least a confirmation that this matter does not, is not considered of public interest. Um, I presented my understanding of why police becomes involved with TDC's enforcement matters to this community board back in June this year. I know you had a meeting with Mr. Tunley from the New Zealand Police, and I wonder if any of these questions or matters I put forward with you were discussed in that meeting, or if there will be any publicly available information about that meeting. Otherwise, does the public have has to contact the Goima if there was any interest about that meeting and request the information via an OII? IA, sorry. And lastly, if a member of the public has got an interest to have a confidentially scheduled meeting held in the public, held in public instead, is there any procedure that you could advise us of uh, or that, that you could make the general public aware of that one could use to register an interest before a meeting is being held? Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, do you want to table your notes? Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of mess up here. Thank you. Okay, so that includes our public forum. Uh, we've done that. And we will move on to presentations. So we've got... Um, Drew, oh, sorry, Jane and Bill, welcome. Just pull up another chair. Time today. So we're just coming um, in front of the community board to discuss the speed management plan, which is currently up for consultation started the consultation at the end of November and the consultation will be running through to the 29th of um, 29th of February. Skip on to the next one. Yeah, thank you. So just a quick overview. Um, it's Nelson Tasman. Oh, sorry, Nelson City Council and um, Tasman District Council are jointly consulting on this. We're looking at um, all of our roads in the district, out, but not our state highways. So it's all the roads in the urban areas and in the rural areas under the speed setting limit, the setting of speed, I'm not getting that right today, the setting of speed limit rule. Um, we are required to have a speed management plan. Um, so we are out for consultation. We understand the new government will be making amendments to the plan. At this stage, we don't know what those amendments will be. They, they did have requirements on when we needed to alter um, speeds around schools, and uh, there was a timing attached to that. That timing has been removed. Um, so we are, because we know we need to get um, community feedback. We are continuing with the consultation period. So just this, is, this one's just a recap of why we're talking about speed. So again, more people um, die on our roads per head of population than in similar countries. And sometimes the speed limits on particular roads may be too high in relation to the design and the features of the road. 
sometimes even when people are obeying the legal limit, they may not have enough time to respond in, in a crash. And regardless of the cause of a crash, speed is the difference between somebody walking away unharmed or being seriously injured or killed. And around the country, we have seen um, speed reductions reducing in a drop in deaths and serious injuries. And that includes in on State Highway 60, uh, where the speeds have been lim uh, reduced from 100 down to 80, that we've had a 63% reduction in deaths and serious injuries. And on State Highway 6, State Highway 6 between Nelson and Picton, there's been a 93% percent reduction in deaths and serious injuries. And there are other examples around the country. Um, and also in 2019, um, we ran a survey about um, speeds, asking people uh, to look at different types of roads around the districts. It might have been rural roads, rural unsealed roads. It might have been the roads in, in um, towns. And we had 2,000 people responding to that survey. So I've got a series of data which helped us inform our draft speed management plan. Um, at that time, uh, nearly 90% thought a speed limit of less than 50 was right for our town um, centres. 91% thought a speed limit of less than 100 was right for our winding and unsealed road, rural roads. So we have our consultation out at the moment. What we're looking at is four um, options for the urban area. So option A is, is doing the minimum, the speed, uh, doing the minimum, which is just looking at our outside school areas, um, and that's outside the school gates, and that's dropping them to 30 kilometres. Option B is looking at the school areas and also our town centres and our tourist areas. And, looking at dropping those to 30k. In some areas such as Motueka, we've got schools really close to the town centre. So we've created, if you look at, at, at the maps online, you'll see we've created a little bit of a, a school town centre zone, which captures that 30k area. Um, and that's the same in Richmond as well. We've got a lot of schools clustered around close to the town centres, Richmond School, Henley, the, the college, um, so they're clustered in a 30k zone. Our option C is looking at 40ks on all of the local urban streets. This, um, this doesn't include our urban connectors, our arterial routes. Um, and then option D is looking at 30k. So I'll just quickly go through some of the options a bit more in depth. So um, yeah, like so I, I, I grabbed this map from Stoke. Um, so this is showing you, um, I have to stand up, Ugh. this is Stoke Shops here, Nayland, Nayland College is in here, Nayland Primary um, in Birchwood. So this is showing you the 30k um, do minimum, um, 30k area of this map. Um, if we flip onto the next screen, thank you. This is showing you, it's grabbing the Stoke Stoke Shops, it's grabbed the railway reserve through here, um, retirement villages in this area. So that becomes the largest school zone. Um, the urban connector, these make like Songer Street, main roads, um, these stay 50 kilometres. If there's any early childhood centres, um, they're also captured as these ones. Skip to urban option C. This is showing you what 40k looks like across Stoke um, with the green line, a uh, blue showing you 40k. Um, the, the main connecting routes still remain um, 50 kilometers. That's why Mia Road. It slowed down, slows down slightly outside Stoke shops and Stoke School as well. And flipping on to urban option D, again similar thing, this um, orange color is showing you the 30 kilometers. Um, and then you've still got your 50 k's on your main main roads, your Nayland Road, and your Amir Stoke, Main Road Stoke. Just click on the next one. The next option we've got is um, for our rural option, um, rural areas. We've got four options. The first again being lower speeds around schools. The next one, um, 
I think we'll go on to the next slide. It's probably easier to talk to about. So what I'm, what I'm showing here is low and meet mooching. So this is showing you the slower speeds right outside um, on School Road. That, that's looking at a permanent um, six uh, thirty k, and then a variable speed on um, um, the, on the Mutri Highway. That's a rural option one. Rural option two. This is where we're still got we're still keeping on the school road. Um, school area. What we're doing is looking at any rural residential area is going down to either 50 or 60 kilometers. If it's already 50, it stays at 50. But if it's already a higher speed, it'll be dropping down to 60. Our winding or narrow unsealed roads become 60 kilometers. Our high risk roads, of which the Mutri Highway is one, will reduce down to 80 and any adjacent roads change down to 80. Any existing limits lower will not increase and the speeds are unchanged elsewhere. Um, looking on, yep, option three. This is looking, it's, option three is a little bit of a simpler one in terms of it's 80k across the rural area. School zones are still low. Um, rural residential still goes down to 50 or 60. And our final option is this is based on a Waka Katahi safe and appropriate speed guidelines, as is option D in the urban areas, is um, unsaid, um, sorry, 30K, 36K outside the schools, rural residential still goes down to 50, 60. Unsealed roads, all unsealed roads go down to 60. All windy and narrow sealed roads go down to 60, and every other road stays 80. If we on the next map, this will show you an interactive map. So online um, on our Shape Tasman page, we have got an interactive map where you can zoom into any road in the district, except for the state highways. You can click on a street and Whichever street you click on, it will show you the options. So if it's in a town, it will show you the urban options for that particular street. If you're in the rural area, it will show you the rural options. And you can go through, have a look at each option, and it will show you the reason of why the change is being made. Next slide, thank you. And sorry, it's a little bit blurry. So there's a, uh, quite a few ways to um, give us information, um, give us feedback. You can email us on the safe speeds at tasman.gov.nz. Um, we've got the Shape Tasman page. We've had 500 submissions to date. Um, and we've also had pop-up sessions. We've been to the Motowaker Library. We're there on the weekend. We've been to the AMP show here, here and, and um, um, the Nelson AMP show. We're off to Murchison's AMP show and um, Tarkika's AMP show around the district. Um, so that's all we have, and we'll have a left anything out. No, no, that's... It's the whistle stop tour of the speed <laughs> management to date. And, and I guess, yeah, you're, you're all welcome to join us at the at the shows. We're back at the library here early in the new year, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. Um, I think it's, I don't think it might be the tw tw week of the 8th, week of the 12th, we're coming back. Thank you. Um, just a couple of questions. So, because I remember we met way back, we did a wee workshop. Um, has anything changed from them? Because you gave us a bit of a graph with those options. Has anything changed within the options from back then that you can call? I don't think so. We may we may have added the 60K on winding and narrow unsealed in, into one of the options. It's the option three, I think it is. Yes, good. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Um, thanks for your presentation. Can you, if I was to go onto that interactive map, <laughs> would it show me exactly how far the 30K stretches if I'm, for example, outside, um, on Park Street by school, Parkland School, does it show me how far that 30k stretches? It does. Yep. It does. Look, if you, you want to bring it up if you want. Yep. Yeah. 
No, I don't think we have time tonight. I just wanted to clarify because, you know, it's great you come and do a presentation. It's not so great when you use Stoke as an example. It would have been better for you personally to use Motueka. Um, but it's good to know that anyone sitting in public forum can go on there and actually see when we say we're doing 30K outside of school, just how far that 30K actually extends because I'm sure it's not between the boundaries of the school. Thank you. I'll just get a clarification and then I'll come to the hut. So just to clarify, the speed management plan is part of something that the former government, the requirement from the former government? I know there's two parts to it, but was that the initial drive for the review? Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, the former government required us to, to produce speed management plans and to have completed that by June 2024. The current, so on that basis, we had started the process. The current government has now repealed some bits of that legislation, and in particular the, the, the timing, and have indicated that there will be a new speed management guidelines produced in the next little while. So it, it, we have decided, and uh, a guidance from, from the two mayors was following that, that announcement. The, the announcement was that, that speed management guidance or speed management plans could still be produced, but they needed to consider safety and economics and community feedback. So on the basis that, that we were required to consider community feedback, it has been decided to, to continue with this process that we had started. So we will continue it through to the end of February. We will then make a decision on, on what we do with it, depending on, on what information and what guidance we have from, from central government at that stage. I just um, so prior to May um, 2022, councils could make bylaws to um, for the speed around their own districts. Um, the, the new rule was um, was announced. So from 2000, 2019 and to, till today, we haven't made any but well, a, a handful of very small minor adjustments to speeds while we were waiting for this new rule to be in place. Once the rule came in place, we said, right, we need to make a new speed management plan to, because we've been hearing from the community, various community groups that they wanted changes around the district. So we've collated that information and said, okay, we've got all of this information now, let's go out to the public. Since then, the rule has potentially changed again, but We've still set things in motion. Okay, that's great that you are going out and consulting and got different pop-ups and stuff. Um, considering the survey response, I think that's from all of Tasman and Nelson, that's like 2% of population that responded. Um, in those consultations, I just ask if you can, with your um, stats, just provide a little bit more detail around the dates that those... Uh, for example, the date range for the drops in death, uh, was that around the time everyone was locked down or, you know, just provide a little bit more um, uh, information around those stats and the, and the, and the numbers uh, and the rate of death drops and stuff, just to give uh, a fuller picture for the public when they're making those decisions and feeding back, that would be great. Uh, board Member Hughes. That was what I was going to ask. We have some clarifications on the 93% drop, when was it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because, I mean, I drive the Nelson, to, oh, sorry, new to this, through the chair. Yes. Um, Nelson to Picton um, is a great road, except if you were towing something and you always felt guilty, you're know, pulling over all the time to let people pass. Now it's actually a lot easier, it's a nicer road. Um, so, yeah, but. 93% drop in deaths and serious injuries since, well, it's only been a couple of years. So have 100 people died on the road and now only seven have, have died? Well, I, 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 how do you come about the statistics? So if you could just forward the statistics to us, that'd be great. There we go. Shut up now. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
yeah, if you're on, on the website, we do have a link to our crash data, which is more in depth, but I can send that out after the meeting. Sure. Um, Armstrong? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Just after. Time to probably to think about whether. Uh, a, a workshop for the community to make a submission as a form of If you have thought about it, yeah. Yeah, good point. Um, I can put that out to the board. We can see if we can come up with a date. We can work like the next step. Yeah. We really should ratify a meeting. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the floor? Thank you so much for the presentation and all the work you're doing. Appreciate that. So we've got a presentation from Drew Hayes Downer. And Drew, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you guys again. It's been, I think, six months since I've sat here. So, yeah, there's a bit, bit of uh, water under the bridge since then. Um, next slide, please. First, we'll just, um, well, I guess, firstly, apologies to councillors uh, Walker, Dalla, and Mahu. This is a Motueka based version of the presentation I did to council um, a few weeks ago. So, a lot of the same statistics you're going to hear and um, quotes and whatnot. So, um, I guess what, what have we been doing in the last six months? Um, we've been obviously maintaining the unsealed roads around the district. Um, the Motorworth Ward does have slightly less proportion of unsealed roads. So um, our grader operator has completed about 37 kilometres of uh, grading on the roads, which is still a fair whack. Of interest, we've actually spent a higher proportion of money on maintenance metering on those Motorworth based roads. We've put out um, 1,400 uh, cubic metres of material, uh, which lines up with our asset management strategy um, of investing in the wearing course. Um, historically, it's been sort of the poor cousin, uh, the budget that gets robbed to pay for other things, but we've been pretty, pretty, um, yeah, we've held fast and really spent the money where we needed to. And as a result, we've seen a reduction in greater hours on the network. Um, just in the last couple of months, we've actually dropped our grade to four days a week instead of five days a week, which is pretty cool. So we've seen a 20% reduction um, in grading time, effectively. Um, as well as a lot of compliments coming through from the public, um, through community groups, and also notes left on the grader just about the, the state of unsealed roads. They are getting better and better, and people are noticing it, which is great to see. Um, Oh, sorry, can we go back on? Sorry. Um, the, the middle image there, it's high shoulder removal. Um, it's a drainage maintenance treatment, effectively where we trim the edge of the road. Um, it does a couple of things. In, in a reseal site, it helps us identify the edge of seals so that we can actually seal up to the edge of the road. Um, and also it allows the water to get from the edge of seal to, to the burn to... Drain, drain away effectively, gets the water away from the, the pavement, which is what um, is possibly a pavement's worst enemy is water. So um, we've actually done 5.8 kilometres of that around the Motueka area um, in the last six months, which is a fair bit. Um, I think there's probably, there's a fair few reseal sites out this way this year. Um, and then the last image there is just a typical new culvert we've put in. Um, we've done a, a fair few new culverts and a lot of drainage maintenance work so far this year as well. Next slide, please. Um, other bits and pieces, obviously we've done a lot of footpath maintenance around the traps. Um, we've obviously we've got the main road lower military, the guardrail or the, the barrier there that's been hit. Um, that's actually being replaced in the new fund, uh, new year with a proper guardrail, the section that's been damaged, which is really good. Um, the, the crews have done 9,000 square metres of maintenance ceiling, which is Obviously, a treatment to try and waterproof the chip seal when it becomes old and fatigued and cracked, it just renews it so it maintains that waterproofing. 
And I guess um, 921 square metres as well of heavy pavement maintenance where we go in, take the surface off and either rebuild the road or stabilise the road with um, stabilising agents. Um, of note as well, uh, the, the team's picked up 18 trees off the road around the Motueka region, which is uh, quite, a, quite a fair few. Um, higher proportion than the other areas in the network, um, predominantly because of places like the Motueka Valley Highway and also the Kaitiritiri Loop. Um, Councillor Walker's favourite question, we've filled a mere 334 potholes in this part of the network in the last six months. So I'd say we're tracking to do slightly less this year, which is a good thing. And I think it's probably to do with the weather from the year before. Um, and then of course, the bottom left there, we're flat tank looking after our people. Um, way up to Christmas is pretty stressful for everyone. Um, at home stresses, at work stresses. And yeah, we just take the time to, to look after them. That's actually our mower operator, Greg, it was his birthday. So the supervisor shouted him some smoker, which is pretty cool. Um, the next slide, please. Um, this is actually a we. I'm not sure if we can access that or not. The link. It's a GIS plot, effectively, of all the work that we've completed. And I just thought we'd pull this up and give you an idea of the volume of work, the amount of dispatches, etc. If it works. Pretty quick. So you can see there it's all, all lit, um, grouped into areas. Um, and if we zoom in, I don't know if that's possible or not. If we zoom into yeah, just any of the areas, it sort of splits out into bigger numbers. And you can actually go right down to so just pick one of the dots without a number in it, out to the left there a little bit. Yeah, that one there. We can actually see see what the, the job was and find some detail about it as well and link it back to RAM. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know and I can drop you an email with the link to the map. Pretty cool, pretty cool um, we've plot. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this going forward for 2024, um, we've had a pretty big six months. We've had up to 12 crews on the network, which is a lot of people. There's been a lot of expenditure today, but it's put us in a really good spot to close out with our major pro programs of work. Um, for example, we've got our asphalt renewals. Um, the sites in this ward, or the Motueka Water Wildman, obviously that's been done. Had some great feedback from the, the resident just there, so it's the quietest he's heard it, which is fantastic. Um, and also we've got two sites on Imakuri Road to do in Asheville as well. Um, we've also got our area-wide pavement treatment, which is up Church Valley behind Wakefield this year. Um, the road's just falling to pieces there at the end of its life. Um, as well as we're in January, where we start our annual remark of the road markings. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, you can if you can make that play, then fantastic. But if not, we'll do it. Um, a major part of our expenditure each year is reseals. That's sort of what we gear up to do. Um, all the a lot of the pavement work we do is to get the roads ready and serviceable to be able to reseal, to give them a, another, um, you know, 20 odd, 20 odd years before the next reseal. Um, we spend approximately about $4 million a year over the entire district um, on reseal. So it's a fairly big expenditure for council. Next slide, please. Um, so if we follow this link as well, this one here is specifically our major treatments, which is our reseals and asphalt work. And I've sent this map out before to councillors um, and sort of show you this as well. It's another ArcGIS plot, which pulls, it's probably quite a bit slow because it pulls straight from RAM, um, which is our database for road. So here we go. So if we zoom in on the Motueka board, for example, if we can, please. The, I guess the zoom, if we zoom right in on one, it would be a good one. Yeah, maybe click on full street. It'll tell you what the treatment is, um, the area, where we're starting and where we're finishing. Um, so you can actually get in and see, you know, when when residents ask you questions about when's my road going to be resealed, et cetera. You guys can actually jump in and 
click on click on it and you can see the treatment lengths, et cetera, which is pretty cool too. So next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so I guess got some feedback from the board that I report to, which Richard Kirby sits on, um, that we don't really, you know, we we do things in the community, but we don't really talk about it much. Um, so we've actually started on the, the board report that I write each quarter for the, the principals group, um, including some information. So I thought I'd just share a couple of bits and pieces with you guys from the previous uh, month. Um, I'm involved with Nature Land Wildlife Trust. I sit on the board, a um, bit of a donation of my time because I think they do some cool things. Um, and I put them forward into a program that Downer has called Downer Donate, where they, they pick a charity or charities per month and donate a certain amount of money. So we actually got um, $9,000 donated to Natureland, which is a pretty cool um, donation to a not-for-profit charity. Um, more, more apt for the Motueka area would be the, the North Street Reserve Park Link sponsorship. And I know that that's been to this meeting before. It was going to be in Transport Choices and it wasn't. Um, but yeah, Down is actually going to sponsor um, the park link effectively, which is pretty cool. So yeah, our crews will be rolling in in the new year and delivering that. And then, um, Claire, you got me to talk at the last meeting I was here about the um, share the road training that we, we undertook um, at the Wetlix Triathlon and various other places. We actually rolled that out at the uh, Richmond AMP show as well. We joined um, up with Council's Road Safety Coordinator, um, the New Zealand Police, and a few other um, play, you know, um, companies, whatnot. Um, and yeah, we delivered the training, and we actually won um, best best um, commercial show or something like best. We got a wee ribbon anyway. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we're pretty pretty happy with that. So it's cool to see all of our leadership team there donating their time over the weekend as well. So. Yeah, that's um, that's about me really. So, if there's any questions, um, my ears always prick up when I hear the word donate and things like that. So, the donor donate. So, can community groups apply for that, or do you as community groups can apply through myself? So, absolutely. If you drop, email drop me an email. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Uh, Two weeks that way. Board Member Hughes. Yes, through the chair. Uh, I saw one of your slides there. That I have never been in there, but that was Barry Fields. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it looks like they're still completing it. Is that a new road they were doing there, or is that repairs? No, that was uh, that was the video that we saw. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. No. So that was the second coat seal. So when a roads first built and then got the first layer of seal over it you don't get quite get enough residual binder to make the seal completely waterproof so it gets a it's called a birthday seal in the industry where um two to five years after the initial seal you go in and do a reseal and that was the that road's um birthday seal if you will which happened like yeah it happened actually last season so, so all roads that have the same amount of seal in the district currently? Yeah. No, they're vastly different. Each road's got different treatments. Um, each road's got different historic treatments as well. Some roads have got this much, you know, this, you know, seal layers like that thick, um, and they become unstable after a while. So you can't actually have too much, too many layers of seal. Um, yeah, obviously, every 10 to 20 years, depending on the hierarchy of the road and the volume of traffic, they get a reseal. Um, there's all sorts of algorithms, much smarter people than myself manage um, to tell us when, but the seal layers are different everywhere you go. Thank you. Yep. Deputy Chair. One question, but just for information. Um, so the, the road works down past straight with the, the raised crossings by the school and, and the new configuration there. So that finished on the 13th of December. And on the 14th of December, at quarter to seven in the morning, the truck started again. So just so you know, okay. that Tower Street is just as busy with trucks mm. as it was before the road work. So, so I don't know 
how long those raised things are going to last. So just really for information, um, it's, it's full of trucks again. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Yes. Dean. Yeah. Um, so you did brief report, which hopefully you've all seen. So yep. um thank you as read and thank questions. I guess um we'll do uh Councillor Murray and then I'm strong. Just um just leave it the bus stop on Water Street, I think that's been the council, I think that's yeah, yeah, been a yeah, yeah. yeah. the time before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the same thing has been and it's gone through so um, so just for an update, it's been a date. Well um so I've been so we're we're planning on um, getting downers to do it. So I've actually been talking to Drew today on that. Um, and he is um, gearing up for February. Thank you. Uh, Armstrong. Um, and all the stuff that's to be done that has been approved uh, in that first lot there, the first bullet point. Um, so I assume that there are, is a, a time. Um, Progression for those, so they all get done by the end of June, is it? Um, well, that's the target. We've actually got another year on top of that. So that that was that was the original target, and then it was extended a, a whole another year. Um, however, we still want to try and get through as much of it as we can by by June. Um, and yeah, probably the biggest chunk of work that come, is coming up is the Western Western Works, and the um, the process for that is to get the stormwater design finished which will be with me on 1st of February um, and and I think by the time we work through that um, it should be March that we could get started on on those um, on like Par Street and Whakarewa Street um, and then the others are kind of you know they'll fit in around that at least I think we're on track for there or thereabouts for the end of June. Sorry. Well, um, so the you won't now, because of, of the funding stopping, have the path going through from um, the end of Pass Street to Akarewa and then from Green to in Edward. Uh, so from end of Pass to Whakarewa is, in, is included. So um, the, so what we call the Tiafina Marae Path, that goes from past street at the end of the houses, down past the Marae, around the corner, and then up to, on Queen Vic, up to Whakarewa Street. Okay. Um, and then the Whakarewa Street works is um, the footpath on Whakarewa itself, that missing bit. Um, uh, Not the bit opposite the airport. The bit opposite the airport is, um, I would say that's less certain. Um, the... We need to we need to get the we need to get the Tiafina Marae priced um, and and the Fakadawa footpath priced because this, there's no stormwater in those areas so the stormwater costs are, are probably going to be quite um, reasonably high um, so that will so we, we need to see what we've got left for the the bit offs of the airport um, yeah so that's a, a wee bit uncertain but it's just kind of the approach. You know. Now, I think I might just jump to special projects because are you going to speak in special projects, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. So, should we jump to them so that you don't have to? So, we're going to uh, eight point four, everybody.
Okay, we'll just go down the list and then um, we'll stop at your parts, Tony. That's an update. So, number one, playground update for push. That's you, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, well, that one's on hold. So we're going to defer all of them. Um, was our decision? Yeah. I'm happy to come back in the new year and discuss that with you. I mean, it's, the, it's up to the um, community board to reallocate funding, I, I assume. Uh, so at the moment, we're on hold. Yes, yes, for both of those. Yeah. Right, so the accessible playground at Dex. So Dex is uh, still progressing. I'm working with um, Kamanu and we will I'll be coming back to the community board uh, at our hopefully our next meeting to give you some update on how, how much things are really going to cost us and whether we do need to stage, whether we do need some more money. So um, I will have some more really kind of more detail around how we're going to be able to do things. So that will hopefully be in the, uh, either January or February. Yes. Yes. So in terms of um, in terms of the extra funding, um, so, so I've had a half conversation with Grant in terms of, but for the board to consider and protect, for Tony to bring a report back in Feb whether $100,000 over the surplus board funds to date that's looked at passing to that project, which would give you a half a million dollars. Yeah, that would be helpful. My understanding is you're about 100000 short. Yes, yes. Um, so the board currently has around $150,000 of carryover surpluses. Um, most of that would have come from special projects, um, but not all of it. So if that's if, that's, if the board's interested in, in looking at that, then you could sort of give... Tony, an indication for a report of that substance to come back in Feb. Just if you're interested in that option. Yeah. So report will come, then you'll have a debate and decision then. But if if that's a something that, if, if Dex Reserve is a key project that the board wants to get over the line, you potentially going to be faced with this is what you can do for four hundred thousand dollars. So you have to take other things out or stage it. And I don't know when you're going to stage it to. Um but it's for the board to decide. Um, so. I'm just doing council. Oh okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, through you, Chair, I'm very keen to hear what we would get if you add that extra hundred K on as opposed to what you were going to be pulling out for those four hundred. So I don't expect an answer now, yeah. but I'm keen to further that dialogue as a board. Shut up. The I don't know. The um the hundred the hundred thousand that was short, does that does that include the basketball court? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. What's that? What's out? Yeah. I think it's probably prudent to get some figures together so I can really present you with with where we're where the lay of the land is. It's pretty hard at the moment. Um I'm trying to negotiate with uh one provider um UMAT who who's the poor and play um at the moment to try and see if we get a really good value for money in terms of doing using them for other projects as well. So there's a little bit of work that I've got to do with Kamanu um and I'm not sure when the first meeting is in the new year, but I'll oh it's in February. Well that gives me a little bit of time to be able to get there. So I'm I'm back on the eighth. And so, as well, who's from Kamanu, who's helping me with the landscape planning, he's going to try and pull together something and some more detailed um, ideas around maybe a bit of a change to the play equipment, the one um, the, uh, we'd like to make it really accessible. I think some of the options that we've presented already are less accessible, are less accessible than we probably could go, because this is really what we're after as a, a fully accessible playground. So... There's a few little bits, you know, it was a high level um, design that I provided you last time uh, with really high level costs. Now we're getting down into, you know, the nitty gritty of, of how high things are and how deep things go. So that should provide us with a lot more information, but I'm, I'm pretty certain we're going to need some more money, but I prefer to go, we're going to need this kind of money. Um, yeah, just one, thank you through the chair. Um, 
I presume this is common knowledge, and if it's not, I'll apologise now. Um, are we able to leverage off and piggyback off a said playground that's been purposed and tabled elsewhere in Richmond? Is that's, there bulk buying deals that, that we can Absolutely, that's... <laughs> You should be a, a, a playground rep. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's through the chair. That yeah. was exactly my conversation with Will yesterday. Um, we've got a procurement process that I do have to follow. Um, I think we'll be have to, having to get three quotes for everything. Yeah. But what we'd like to do is try and negotiate a contract with uh, the poor and play provider across a number of projects um, that will give us hopefully a really good um, you know, square metre rate. That's that's the plan. If we can do that within our procurement process, then we will. Awesome. Um, I guess just going back to Councillor Maru's point, and then also your point in the email, uh, Board Member Armstrong, around having to go back out for special projects. Like, so if we as a board decide you yeah, we'll put that hundred towards this project. Um, so what that fifty, I guess that we can. Because what's our sort of time to go back out to consult for special projects with the? So, three minutes together. The current hundred is seventy-three, which I think is probably about one hundred forty, one hundred and fifty, because there's some costs that aren't allocated. Are essentially what surpluses accumulated over years, rather than special project funds. So you'll have another special project fund land. Um, so a lot of that would have accumulated through special projects, but not just that. So some of it's from the market income um, and, and different things over time. But um, if, if a report's brought back and Mr. Drummond's consulted about where the funds have come from, where they could be useful, then the board can have all that information to discuss. Yeah, is everyone happy with that? Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on the accessible program? Um, any other parts in here, Tony? Um, yes, Chair, I have got some information from the young, but I think Downs has just confirmed that they were going to go and guard the walkway at the other end of I don't remember where it is now. Yeah, yep. so that was what Lynn provided me today. Okay. Um, Steve asked me to present. Uh, is this the cemetery? Yes, and also Little Kaiteri to Stevens Bay Walk Bay up oh, yes. um, uh, has been completed. So the Little Kaiteri to Stevens Bay Walk Bay upgrade the Little Kaiteri side using the ten thousand uh, dollars uh, uh, money um, has been completed. Uh, Stevens Bay leading down to Cook Crescent will be completed in autumn using RFC $16,000. That was already we kept. Um, uh, and some EWI consultation has, has already been completed. Um, Montuaca Library Landscaping EWI consultation has been completed. Still to complete uh, consultation with Kosa. Is it Kosa? Is it Kosa? Yes, Thank you. Um, uh, in the new year, and construction is planned in autumn when planting condition, conditions are you know better. So, um, and then the Motuaka Cemetery priority list still to complete. Steve will contact then Deputy Chair Graham uh, in the new year, but now you're the chair. So yes. <laughs> that's that's what he was commenting on there. That's, that's, that's fine, guys. I sort of wonder if we change the name of that. Project to the maintenance, uh, sorry, landscape management, because it's more about the maintenance now yeah. rather than a. It's good. To, to landscape management. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sorry, Councillor Walker. Well, then, just um, a point of clarification, probably, Tony, that um, my understanding, having met and I probably, yeah, this falls under the conversation of the landscape around the library, but I'm also mindful that it falls under Dan, who's now currently left. But so the library won another award, and part of that award was, if I understood correctly, that we got something like 10K 
which is um, being allocated. And I think Adam's un overseeing the work, which is going to be a bike rack stand, a timber one placed out here, my understanding is probably parallel with the ablution block. Are we making sure that all our departments interweave so that the landscape that you've just been talking about is aware that Adam's doing that piece of work? Does that make sense? Henderson? Projects. Projects? Yeah. And funding, yes, yeah, well, hey, so the library won an award, and that award is this, from what I understand, correct me if I'm incorrect here, Councillor Della, but 10K, which is being purposed for a wooden bike rack, which is meant to complement other work that the Transport Choices team are doing on Wallace Street with placements of bus shelters, bike racks. Sometimes transport choices and reserves involved in two different things and, and don't often talk. But and projects is another them. one together, isn't it? That's a different stream, which is Adam's. Projects actually doing stuff for uh, the, the transportation team, the transport choices. Yep. Projects team does stuff for reserves as well. Um, mm -hmm. But in this case, Adam's been doing transport choices and he did the library here. Yes, he's not he did. involved in the landscape. No. no. But that's, so, my, that's what my concern know, is that you've got. Adam sitting in that field, and you've got the landscaper sitting in a different field, and Steve's team. Over. Just done an arrow between Adam and Steve, and we'll connect. I get arrows, particularly if they come to the conversation. Yeah. No <laughs> Thank problem. you. Yeah, I'll make sure they talk. Thanks, Tony. Okay. Was it good on you? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was hoping. Um, but if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to come to me directly if you have any issues. So. Just got one to you. So the note that Lynn had, that Lynn also alluded that she is using about 5K from the swimming pool to the harbour master. The downers are doing from the that swing arm, the pool, and then she was going to do the other arm. Uh, sorry, I didn't read all of it out. Okay. So approximate $5,100 quote to resurface path from saltwater bars to George Key to proceed in the new year. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, saltwater bars landscaping plan to be done for winter planting. That's the other two um, points that she wanted me to make. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for delivering all the stuff we suggest. No problem. <laughs> Appreciate no problem. that and have a lovely break. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I am. That's why I did Tony. Tony. Enjoy your break. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to, um, because we just got, um, maybe Hughes is going to update us on beautification of High Street. But before we do, um, Remember, not so welcome to join us. Well, thank you. I'll be on this. Is this more of a general and what happened? Okay, lovely. Yeah. I just wanted to try and make sure we had all our presentations out of the way. Um, have you got an update? Do you have issues on the parks? Yes, on the parks. Uh, my team have been very busy, uh, and uh, all the parks are uh, at the printers in uh, in Auckland, and they'll be ready early next year. And my team have advised that uh, they've approached the men's shed for the installation of such items. Jeez, I'm onto it. With no help from nobody. I'm just checking that we have covered Okay, so sorry, I've jumped all the way forward. Is there anything? Um, in that summary, is everyone okay with the financial breakdown in that summary? Yeah. So I just need um, well, a motion to receive the report. I have a second, please. Uh, Councillor Walker, everyone in favour, say aye. Yes. Carried. Okay. Yeah, I'm there, sorry. Thank you.
Right, we'll jump back to 8.2, the Cheers report. Just got one Financial is after the cheese report. Yes. Sorry, I'm just going to find the cheese report. Yep. Got it. Okay, so uh, motion to receive the cheese report. Yeah, uh, Deputy, Deputy Chair Hutt and a seconder. Board member Hughes. Uh, still need a little more for that. Discussion. discussion first. All right, so let's move into discussion. Um, Councillor Maru, would you like to walk us through? <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so the special projects, you would have received an email today, I think, with the draft special projects policy. So the um, for the board to workshop if the board wishes to further refine it. So that's the draft from the workshop that's already taken place. Uh, so if you want to further workshop that, then to send those notes back to Democracy Services for a paper to come for the board to ratify the final policy. So the, if you want to do that and ratify it by fever means that you'll workshop that sometime between now and February get the feedback back to staff, have that formal paper back to adopt by feb. But um, I think there was a desire to do some further workshopping on that. So that's that one. Um, uh, maybe in terms of the Merry Christmas and congratulations to the new chair, what I forgot to say earlier is um, also congratulations on your place at, on the Kia Sato um, committee. <laughs> so Councillor Walker represents as a, as the councillor for friendly, friendly towns and um, there's a, a board chair seat there for you. So I said that there would be a new chair person, so they'll let you know when that meets. It's pretty infrequent. Um, and then I think it's back to you because the other bits um, you can pick up in correspondence. So there was um, in particular the letter from from Public Forum the conversation that started here and then a request to defer that in terms of Mr. Hallier's request to this meeting um, was deferred till now, but it's also captured in correspondence. So um, I guess while I'm talking, just in terms of one of the public forums about um, different droppings of different um, bio substances by humans and dogs, I had a call from Roger Whitwell who would really like an additional... Um, doggy bag stand along Harbour Road somewhere. So I might just actually send a service request in. It seems to be a big gap between a stretch of property and he was thinking around where the, the shed is at the golf course. It might be a handy space, but I might just send it through just for you. So he rang me. Back, back to you. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the um, correspondence. Okay. Oh, and I, oh, sorry, yep. one, other, one other thing, sorry, Madam Chair, is I also made a decision prior to 4.02 this afternoon um, for you to consider in the new year as um, um, Member Hughes wanted to address some public forum. And I um, I just think it's funny that a board member leaves his seat to speak here. So I, I had invited him to um, say what he wanted to say through the Chair's report, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Yep, so is that something you'd like to do, Member Hughes? Uh, there was reasons for speaking to a public forum. Um, there are a number of issues, and they're all intertwined. And as I said, some of these are the driving force for me standing for council and the community board. Um, it's, it's, well, there's three issues, unanswered questions, incorrect statements, and Peach Island. And they all go hand in hand together. Um, for me, I am, I, I hope, um, I see we had uh, um, the only Ray, Jenny McFarlane and Elaine Stevenson on Zoom. They're unfortunately not here, but I presume they were there for a reason. Um, I am allowed, I would like to think my opinions on things. Unfortunately, recent events have shown that I am not allowed to have 
personal opinion, in my opinion. But anyway, so I wanted to read out some statements which have been made out, made by TDC. And that's all I will be saying is TDC. There are uh, lots of them over the last four years. Um, I have been victim and other people have been victim to incorrect statements. Uh, and I, I could sit here and read these out, but I've decided I'll we'll move to just one issue, which was from a Mr. Hellier. And he was subject to an unreasonable complaints uh, policy along with myself. And both of these were, in my opinion, due to issues we were raising over Peach Island. Now, there is Legima um, through various requests. Uh, have said, and this is what Mr. Helly was going on about, um, an email where, amongst other things, uh, Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens' claims were regarded as an ongoing fantasy. And there's a lot of other stuff in the email. But for me, reading this shows that the writer of this email, and I disagree with Mr. Hellier here because he wants an apology from this person, but it's all been redacted. So we don't know who this person is. So it's just TDC. It's clear though that this writer, the author, of the person that said this is part of an ongoing fantasy wasn't actually in the know. He had to get this information from somebody else in council. This is the important thing. There appears to be an organ grinder somewhere. Okay, so the other day, a car, which we all take to be this ongoing fantasy, turned up and uh, my surveillance team advised me and Ray and Brett Stevens, and we shot out there. Uh, we decided that we wouldn't put it on a trailer like the other one, it caused trouble. I thought I'd be more positive, and I took the VIN numbers and we documented the state of the vehicle. Oil packs in the back, that sort of thing. Okay, we then sent some photos to a counselor. The next morning, that car disappeared. It's very good that we're able to uh, initiate such an excellent cleanup. Unfortunately, I've got photographs that they actually just took the car, not all the jagged metal and that that was around it that went later on. Okay, so this ongoing fantasy has in fact turned up. So Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens have proven to be correct. And that's, I suppose, what they would like an apology for. Um, for me, this opens up huge issues. Um, the same people involved in all this um, make statements in regards to other issues. We have um, the issue in February, in which, um, to the best of my knowledge, we were advised that the reasons for police involvement in a I'll call it a raid because I see no other reason, but it isn't. It's an inspection, according to TDC, uh, was because of threats of violence been made against staff. And it was also reiterated to us that they, staff need to be protected. And I fully agree. If someone's going to threaten to kill someone um, in performing their lawful duties, yes, I am fully behind them. Um, and we were also... Uh, um, it's my belief that we were advised that there was uh, video evidence of this. Um, of course, um, I think even myself asked for this uh, and others asked for this footage and it was refused. Um, I draw to people's attention the statement that when the Ombudsman got involved over this matter and the Police Complaints Authority were involved in a separate issue. I have read the report from the Police Complaints Authority and they put their reasons for the visit to this property. And there's no mention of threats of violence anywhere in it. And they even give the reason for police involvement. Uh, and the other thing was that council, I believe I could, if you've got a moment here, sorry. Um, 
Oh, I'll have to do it by memory. I did screenshot it, but as usual, there's so many here. Um, the they said all uh, the the ombudsman had advised that all copies of the video footage had been deleted because it wasn't relevant to the investigation. Well, my understanding that was a reason for you because of threats of violence. So now it appears to be different and the video footage was deleted until I sent an email querying this. The next morning, another release via the Ombudsman was TDC have continued looking and now have found from another drive evidence of it. And from my understanding, it does confirm that there was no threats of violence. Now, this is quite serious. For us as board members, we need to have faith in what we are told by our local service provider is correct. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg here. For myself, uh, I've lost all faith with this sort of thing. And these people are lovely people, but how do I know what's being told to me is correct? If four months later, six months later, I find that it, it's incorrect. Now, uh, I want to work with these people. I want to, uh, but I'm, I've lost faith four years of this and it's just not good enough. And I haven't gone about things the correct way and but four years of this sort of thing, I, I like to think I've, I've tried. So what do we do? Do we ignore these people and we just go, no, nah, we're not gonna get involved. That I believe is wrong because we need to be a voice for our community. And whether or not the subject matter is police involvement over search warrants or the council spending, I don't know how many man hours simply trying to prove whether or not a single live alone woman is, woman is living in a caravan or that sort of thing. It's, we should question this, we should, but it's clear that my time for being able to question these actions has is, is come to an end. I, I, I can't question it anymore. It's, it's pretty clear. I've been told in no uncertain terms. So um, what do I do? Resign and then come back fighting more than ever as a personal start up my own group. I don't know. But to ignore this is simply wrong in my opinion. It's not like there isn't basis. It's not like I'm wrong. Page. Pages and pages, everybody. I'll just get some um, clarification. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of subjects you've touched on, and I appreciate you bringing that to the table. Um, and it does relate back to Mr. Hellier's last time. So just get a bit of clarification from that, because I believe um, Councillor Maru, it was, it was number one, or to acknowledge works being done to remedy Peach Island. Yeah, the, the... Number two, request staff to review um, statements. And number three, request of apology, which is it Mr. Drummond? Um, said that they'd have to go through and find out, and that could be like find out if it was verbal or written on Mr. Manners. Sorry, it was a little steep in there. So, the what I asked was, was was half a solution for the board acknowledge to acknowledge that the work of the three people involved in that had actually benefited in good outcomes for the landowner. And that's and then there was that asked for an apology, and then it was said, please just leave this for another month. So that's where it laid. Right. Um, so that's that's the one I thought we were talking about, but there's obviously other things that um board member users brought up as well. 
So, okay, so that one there, do we know where we're at with that one? It, it was stopped. That was stopped. So if you look, it was stopped. It was, there was a motion to say we don't want to discuss it anymore. And it was stopped. Okay. My board member used. So. But moving, so the, the, the issue is here, it gets worse than this letter, you see, because here we have, see, Mr. Hellier has complained to Linz about this, and they were and they were quite, quite concerned. So, of course, they contacted the Tasman District Council, and Tasman District Council have sent them what appears to be according to this, and I word it very carefully here, because no doubt I'll be facing some questioning. The email I have here suggests incorrect information has been given to Linz. Now, I spoke before that it appears that incorrect information has been given to the Ombudsman. And of course, that can be explained. No doubt the spin doctors will come up with something. But I'm a little bit confused where this has gone because I thought so. This is, um, I'm trying to join. I thought we Mr. were Hallett. joining and we were going to put the rest. Um, uh, a question and a request from a public forum person that spoke last meeting when I remember I missed it, so I had to watch it, yep. watch the video. I thought that's what we were talking about, but we're talking about a lot of things now. And in that case, what does the board, if anything, want to do with that? And then maybe address the other things. But um, there's been other letters from Mr. Hellier since, and it was really clear that I'm I'm not sure that we should have stopped that discussion last night because we had a we had the board decide not to discuss it, but you'd had a public forum earlier asking for something. So that's what I thought we were going to put to rest, but um, oh yeah, in your head. So uh, um, just a point of clarification is that after public forum and when we got to this part of our meeting last month, the Steve Manners agreed that there was a process to go through, which I asked, and we were partway through that conversation when it was tabled that the work at Peach Island was still underway and it was super sensitive for the owners um, and it was to be deferred to this month. I would like, and I don't know if Mr Kirby's in the position to do that, but I think we need to re-engage with what Mr Manners said was the process to acknowledge what Mr Hillier brought to public forum. Not dismissing the rest of what... Um, Board Member Hughes has now shared, but I want to go back to what I brought up with the minutes for last month that we paused that and we need to re-pick that up tonight and come up with a plan to move forward to acknowledge public forum from November's. And I know that um, Board Member Armstrong had put that in an email. Yes. Yeah. So I can help Madam Chair for Mr. Kirby. Yeah. So that I think that's the process around um requesting a staff member apology in terms of an uh, organisational one, and that's where, from a board, I asked whether um, acknowledgement from the board would be enough. So that's where uh, Mr Manners was exploring how, if the request is an apology from the writer of that statement, um, what is that process? Right. I wasn't aware of what Steve Manners actually conveyed to you, so... Chair, mm, you might need to actually listen to the recording of last month to get a understanding of the whole conversation instead of snippets from me, yeah. Council Maru. So if I understand the correspondence, sorry, Madam Chair, we've had today, it has been specific to the comments. The, the letter, the part of the letter that he asked, Mr. Kelly asked to be reduced, was specific to the comments about the ongoing fantasy um, piece yeah. that was discovered through Lagoima. That was, yeah, because I think he parked one when I re watched the video. Two parts. It was, it was a statement part that she was interested in. Yeah. Um, and I think we also discussing about you wanted to have a, a, a workshop or a meeting to oh. get into those details. Do you recall? Yeah, yeah look, look, for me, I'm it's think, quite. I'm just, thinking, sorry. Sorry, I'm just thinking to try and pull this together given where it, you know, in December. Um, What's, what do we want to achieve? Because you've brought up a number of things. So we've got, we've got one from November that we probably need to address ASAP, but then you've got this other stuff. So this is the same. What would be the best outcome that you're looking for since we're not technically meeting until four years? Um, it, it's clear here to me that there is a bigger issue than just Mr. Hellier's letter. 
the fact that when Lynn's have been involved in Mr. Hellier's letter, in, and it, uh, said it, it's subject to everybody having a look at this themselves, because I'm the only one that's got this, okay? So without you going through reading pages and pages, you won't actually have a full understanding. But as I said, Mr. Hellier has drawn attention to two specific emails here. And and, it, and it's quite serious, because the, 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 the second part is, um, whereas there's a clear denial, again, about the concerns of Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens to Linz. Um, and uh, there are several, in, I'll read it out here, as discussed. So there's been a phone call to Linz. There are several individuals who are acting vicariously against TDC. Now, I actually think vicarious, I don't think it's the word he was meaning to use. I, isn't, isn't that honest? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, um, or is it yeah, vicarious? Vic, okay, vicariously against TDC. And this has been one of the most recent antics. antics. I include the text below as a briefing note prepared by one of our... I won't read out that person who is aware of the incident that is being misrepresented. Well, the issue, of course, came up the other day. We have the photographs and that car did exist for a day. OK, it did exist for a day. Um, and, and once again, I thank the Tasman District Council for removing that so efficiently the next morning. Um, uh, so, the, you know, this this is serious stuff. If if the Tasman District Council are going to, for one reason or another, sending correct information to Linz, um, we have to look at whether or not it was deliberate or whether or not it was just people don't know what they're doing. I don't I don't know. I don't know. It just so are you... there needs to be accountability, yep. just as there is accountability for the Mochuaca community board members. Okay, so is your request that public investigation? And I'm not sure how that okay. support for a public investigation. Right. Okay. What excuse me, through the chair. What if it is the CE? where most of this looks like it's heading. What if, despite us being told that everything we say and do as community board members is subject to public and everything is public, I think in the latest email a couple of days ago is on public record, and despite a senior manager stating that nobody can, you know, people can no longer hide behind section 7-2FII, they continue to do so. Entire emails over this matter have been redacted. Not just wording of sentences, entire emails. Now, where is the transparency that we hear about via the Ombudsman? The Ombudsman have congratulated the Tasman District Council over their transparency. So I'll leave it up to you learned people to, uh, I said, I'm just, so in my just... opinion, based on the emails I'm reading. Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to get a clarification on that. So, is he the CE or the mayor? Is that my understanding? If you're unhappy with the CE, you go to the mayor, and so the mayor can raise the technical council with the CE and, and work through that. An independent body? Well, not Gen Z. Something, worry. Something checked out about the CE's done. Unfortunately, I've done all of this, and I was advised by the mayor, the exact words were, take us to court. Um, I have some concerning, I've tried to discuss many of these issues with the mayor. Unfortunately, one of my investigations have shown something which I don't want to bring up in public, but it yeah, is yeah. Yes. very concerning, and so we need an independent investigation. So, so I just, I, can I bring you back in terms of the role of the community board? And so, like Nick, I know you've had a long journey with this because it's related in a lot of phone calls um, a couple of times a week. But I, if we come back, you had a public forum person that presented and wrote a letter to the board that was pretty specific. I've just had a look at the second email that was sent and it was in regards to some statements in an email that were made that doesn't appear to be. So there were an opinion of a staff member that have played out that were true. This has gone way, way down, and, I, and Nick, this is part of public record. So, some of your statements, I guess, 
I know you'll stick by them, but you just need to be careful in terms of some of the lateral stuff that you've um, dived into. But uh, are we not going to talk about the specific request for the public forum that was deferred? I, I don't know where we are, Madam Chair. I yeah. just, um, I'm lost. I think, I, sorry, I think well, it's I've... really important we do bring it back to that first point because it's lingering from last month yes. and we haven't addressed it. Okay. And in that, I, I believe you asked for a workshop or a, a meeting. That's so you can go through the evidence. Right. So I, I believe I've been. Still want to do? Yes. I, be, I believe I've been very careful not to mention any staff members' names. Can that be? So that's. Have I mentioned any staff members' names? No. no. I have simply referred to the TDC. The the letters, from Mr. Hellier. He is quite happy to have them made public. Okay. And the other people. And I already know that. So if anyone has any concerns over what, what I have said so far, can you please raise them now? I'm not going to repeat one of the things you see, because that's just going to be another part of the public record. But okay. if you reflect on there, there was certainly a position named in one of your comments. Um, but you'll get to review that. All right. So let's, how about we put an, an action? Right, have I said something oh, don't worry, there that be, someone's no. got concerns with? Sorry. They've mentioned a name attached to a position. Uh, Don't worry. Oh, well, but, if, if I have, that was um, completely by mistake. I, I apologise. I'm a bit passionate about this, but I've, yes, I, I do apologise if, if I have, because I've made uh, every effort in reading this to try and. Okay. Not... So, can I just um, move that we have an, an action? January, hopefully, January. people are around. I'm just thinking the discussion pre the touch on what, what you requested last month, which was to get together to go through those bits. Um, so an action for um, setting up a, a board to get together in, in January. Um, we might be able to tag some of those other things like strategic planning and revisiting our values, etc. Um, and then Addressing um, addressing Mr. Hellier's, so we just need an update on where that's at, and I guess that is an email to Mr. Manners. To I'm not sure who, who the action was sitting was. I don't think there was an action. I think it was stopped through the chair, but it oh, okay. the Could advice be. you seek from um, uh, Mr. Kirby in terms of what is the process, process that is sought um, in terms of that which. To be fair, I think it's a, a fair request in terms of uh, use of words in an email that's been discovered on a chain of events since, and it may have already been said, I'm, I'm not sure, but it doesn't. Yeah. That's why I offered, does it, does it have any substance from the board to acknowledge that we acknowledge that the that the many discoveries found by um, the people involved has led to some very positive outcomes from the landowners. Um, but uh, yeah, take maybe Mr Kirby take some advice about how an organisational wide acknowledgement of those, so specifically the defamatory statements made in those emails. I've just had a look at that. You know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yes, I agree that there has been a very positive outcome here, but it has come at a great cost to a small group of people, including myself. Okay. The huge amount of time. I've put into this and Ray and them with ongoing denials is it's, it's taken its toll, it's taken its toll. Yeah. And through the chair, I guess that's what I was trying to acknowledge last month. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I hope that that could reset. It doesn't take away other issues, but in terms of resetting, hopefully on that part. So, so the, the positive part for any board member who has some success in anything supporting the community is the positive outcome for the landowner, which I believe is there. Yeah. So that's, that's so it might have hurt, it might have been pain, and there may be others, but actually that's something to celebrate the positive. And then um, you can direct energy and efforts into where you can supporting other ones. But uh, at some point you have to go, actually that works result in good outcome. Oh, Does that make sense? Oh, I, um, okay, so we'll we've got an action there, and we'll move forward on that. So we'll just um, touch on some of the public forum um, 
So we've got, I think we already noted it about the um, what can council do it's for cameras. I'm not sure if that's viable, but uh, the human feces that's come up a couple of times over my tenure here. Um, people use that just out even here, urinating and that instead of using the public toilets. Um, I don't know what the answer is and I don't know what what we can do as a board. Any suggestions, advice? Oh, we have got hands over here, Councillor Walker. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, through your chair. Um, problem with cameras is what do you do with the footage and how do you regulate or do any, I mean, you might catch a, a person going into the bush, probably aren't going to have your camera set up exactly to catch exactly what they're doing in the bush. If you were to go in and find some evidence, we don't have the capacity to actually do anything with footage. And I assure you that the Motueka police don't have the capacity to do something about some footage. So as much as I hear and I grieve that that's a lady's experiment, experience with said dog, um, I do not believe that the camera, sadly, is the answer because we don't have the capacity to follow through. Or, or the finances, unless she wants to pay so much more. We have an enforcement division. They seem, why don't we just right? to enforce the rules? I'm sure there's a public safety or public health rule that you can't defecate on a on a council owned property. It won't be a council bottle. What can I say? Associated with it, who would like to sit at the back all day and make sure that people save themselves? So I think it's, it's a social thing. We've got to try and encourage people okay. to use the bathrooms and the toilets and not use the bush. Yeah. So the interesting thing through the chair is um, I'm not I'm interested whether they reported who it was because it sounds like they may have had some discussion. Um, so, so, and then yes, compliance. Um, service requesting could be so if it's seen, but if it's not seen, it's yeah. And and I think um, I don't think people are a council thing doing that sort of behaviour. I think that's a police thing. Yeah, that's right. You know, I was just going to say that we're looking at putting uh, some security cameras in a sports park to try and mitigate what's been going on down there, and with the power supply and everything available, it's over two thousand dollars per camera. So if you want to go and stick a camera in a park of any great recording capability, you're faced with probably seven or eight grand by the time you get a power supply in and everything set up to whatever. And then it has very limited coverage. You know, you pick a person walking past or walking in the bush. So I'm sorry, but I just, I think the camera thing has to go out. But I'm sorry, I now live on the state highway. <clears throat> And I think we're a dirty bastard community. The amount of crap that I pick up off the side of the state highway each day when I go out for a walk of all sorts of stuff, not just KFC or, or McDonald's wrappers, it's bloody V cans, it's everything that people just... And I can't wait for this new government to turn around and say, if you've got a dash cam and you see someone throw some rubbish out, it's $10,000 fine. I can't wait. It's not far away, I think. Let's bring it on. So, um, I guess the response to Isabel is the board don't support cameras, um, in parts because of funding and resource, but um, the issue lies with the police. So, court, yeah. send them out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a practical thing. I agree. Thank you. Are you sending correspondence back to Yes. Yeah. So the correspondence back to Isabel will be that the board um, do not feel that cameras are appropriate because of cost and resource. Uh, it's also not a council role to have enforcement walking around um, for those matters, but it is a police matter of court and will add on the potential dash cam. Um, is the Sorry, it's with the chair. Is there um, uh, sort of a location of where the 
bins are and the doggy do bags and things like that because um, maybe there is gaps like we were talking about on the golf course if there was the road. harbour road if there was uh, some locations where um, there is a gap might encourage people to yeah. Yeah. but that was only one incident I'm sure that some of the other foods there just make it was I want to go back to my comment of there are people in the community that just don't want to use it it's another issue yeah uh, okay, um, so Claire's going to sell some calendars. Um, we had a presentation from Kevin. Um, so I guess that's just more promoting what's happening with the solar um, panels here locally. Um, Matthias, uh, I guess that's just noting there's nothing specifically brought. Can do. Has anyone's got anything else? Um, we certainly, I believe we certainly need to follow up on issues raised, uh, including the, the other speaker, hearing valid points. But not with a uh, decision. Um, no, and, and exactly what, what will we be following up on? I guess just to make it really clear. Well, the issue was raised of not getting the communication. Oh well, the, back. the what the well the unanswered questions is something I've brought up. Okay. Um, and that needs to be addressed. So that fits in with that. But also, it, it appears that we were asked that there has to be some monitoring of council activities. And I believe that is something that the community board should do, being a voice for the community. If there's issues there, we need to act on them. Yeah, well, we're in a position to advocate yeah. for the community. Yeah. That's so, our role. So, an issue that I took was um, no response to a letter or yeah. a phone call. So, it's just that lack of follow up, acknowledgement, and follow up. Yeah. And, and I guess the other point from that was when um, Mr. Shaker had a response, he, he was told that, um, that they had given a response, but it wasn't probably, so I don't know, it's either we're not getting, uh, we're either getting a standard template response out to people without addressing the issues, I don't know. So I, I guess it's more clear on our response. I have an example that oh sorry. sorry. If you contact the council it's 22 days or whatever it is yeah. to get a response isn't there? There is there is a framework there. Yeah. That's pretty that's the one framework is 20 working days. So we can't get the information back we need to make contact to them. Um, because they let them know why the information may not be the 22s, because they may not have a lot of research required. But the normal CSR is the customer service requests that come through. We try and respond to them within two or three days at the most, um, at least acknowledge that we've received the request. Uh, I've recently copied you into some emails, which I've asked questions of legal and democracy services team. Um, I'm still waiting reply. Perhaps we can follow up with that. Oh, I've received the written now. Hit that. What I was, sorry, what I was pointing out. We received responses, but not actual answers. Now uh, that is where. So the council are quite correct. They say we have responded, but it's when they haven't actually answered the question given. I think that's where it becomes an issue for a lot of people. Um, for myself, my own personal. Uh, quite often, uh, I've heard the matter is closed. <laughs> that's that's not an answer. That's a response. Um, but anyway, then that's my opinion. Okay. Um, so maybe yeah, that's I, what I'm hoping next year is to be able to get.
get into council and, and have conversations with staff to understand their processes and how things work and get some clarity around that. So those sorts of things can come up. Um, Kristen Schaefer, guidance on speaking freely at public forum. And a request for formal response to matters raised in public forums. Council will go. And can we have a point of clarification? If you're coming to a community board to speak at public forum, does it have to be on a topic that's on the agenda? Mm. No, it doesn't. Okay. Is it when it gets to raising it here? Because doesn't it technically become on the agenda once the public has raised it? They're not usually included in the agenda for that month because they can register up to one day before the meeting and the agenda goes out right a week before. Mm -hmm. So um, usually um, there's to and fro in with people that want to register right up until the day before. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So there's, there's a number of exclusions in terms of what you can't say public forum. And I guess the, the key ones for me, one's repetition. Um, but the key one that often comes up for the chair to use discretion is whether it's within the powers and the delegations of the community board to even address. So, But the, the ultimate call comes down to the chair of saying, yes or no, if it's within that, you'll get a, some advice from um, Secretary Threat Democracy Services. And with the chair always having the discretion to make that call, but primarily it will it will ask. So now you know this will be presented with us. Is there actually anything within the board's delegations that you can do to um about it? Which is going to be the challenge. And sometimes I guess it's an opportunity just for it to get on record, even if we're not in a position to be able to do anything. It's it's a voice, a platform for our community to stand up and speak. The only other comments I can make is that if it is, does relate to something that's on the agenda, and you come to deal with that item of the agenda, you can actually take account of what's raised in public forum because it's part of that agenda. But if it's a completely new subject, all you can do is hear it. You can't make any decision because you've got to make a decision based on our officer's report or a report that comes out with the agenda three three days before. Yeah. But we can create an action. Can create, yeah, well, you can do. Um, but it's not a, an action that uh, that's formal of the meeting. It's not a formal minute or, or a decision of the of the of the meeting. It's actually just something for, for further inquiry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Councillor Dower. I will say since two thousand and two, when I first got on the board, public forum was normally used for people coming in to talk about what was on the agenda, coming and want a crossing improved or whatever to try and get. The, the board into their special projects or whatever, you know, where it went. It's 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 a changing world. It, it has changed quite a bit. I think a comment was made last week, confirmed with me, councillors. We the council got twenty four thousand emails in five days. Um, not just complaints, but thank yous, problems, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You damn near need 10, 10 staff just sitting there answering the the things or opening and, and then working out where they've got to go, if, if whatever. It's just getting huge with this electronic stuff. And the council just getting bogged down more and more. And it is slowing things up. I can tell you that now. I can see it myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, it'd be just really great <coughs> to get the public forum back to where the public forum used to be. Like, hey, next year, in the not too distant future, I would say this room's going to be chocker again because we've got a dog by law. It's about to happen. And we've got a cat by law. <laughs> and we've got a speed limit thing that I wish to say something about as well at some stage. Um, but yeah, those those two subjects on their own, I'd say are going to create, if people bother to look and then just not come along later and say that we never consulted. Because it's all there. It's out there right now. Dog by law, cat by law, speed limit. It's all there. What you got is look. So we're going to be have, have some interesting moments coming up. Um, and hopefully the community board will get, we'll get back to what the community board needs to do because at this stage, I'm pretty disappointed over the last three or four years on what hasn't been done by the board because it's been taken over by other stuff. Councillor Dower. Yeah, I just want to say that I think the 
Sorry, I have to say that, but it's fake. Shut up, man. I was quite an attender of the community board, and uh, I was stunned. Can I come up one afternoon to find that the place was packed and the car park was packed, and it was to do with one issue with the dog, just one issue. So you are absolutely correct. When this stuff starts getting out there, um, which beggars the question, why are we messing with it? Just you don't surely do. after decades and decades of people owning dogs, we've got to a reasonable space. What do we need to carry on and you're just hurting the public forum that are shitting on the footpaths and they're not picking it up? Yeah, but that's human and they've done it. Yeah, no, no. Actually, <laughs> he's talking about dogs as well. So there. Yeah. Well, so we have to have a dog bylaw that's going to try and tidy that up. And if people don't like it, what do we do? Tell them to get rid of their dogs? Don't think so. Mm. Oh, I, I, I know this is a hot potato, and that's why I was saying, well, here, real service request into the people that seem to have time. Well, Member Hutt, when, uh, when I spoke to the dog control people to get some information, it's literally the dog bylaw is, is due for a review. It has to happen. Yeah, it has to happen. Like a choice. That's right, yeah. So it's a... It's a, it's a it's a formality, but it gives people the opportunity to then put their thoughts. Okay, thanks so much for your review at the same time mm. at this time of year as well. You know, may not get the buy-in, but I don't know. I think I think yeah, these three issues in particular. Um, you know, be, be, okay. I'm looking forward to putting all this rubbish behind and. Uh, and then getting people to bring their dogs and penguins down so we can have a decent discussion. So it's right at three at the moment and so are the seals because there's a couple of great whites flying there. They're having an awesome time. They need to. It's too many. Okay, so I'll just check what else in the chair's report. Oh, actually, must. Right, let's let's fire through this, guys. Yep. Okay, so page 34. Um I've just written Deputy Chair Hutt working on the um, Edward Fair and Plunk Plunk. Oh, yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, this is the, yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, this is the plaque off the old building, the old library building in Hart uh, Street. Which we cannot remove because of the bricks and mortar and so we're getting a new one, we? we're we're getting getting Yeah, that's yeah. sorted. John yeah. was sorting that out. So uh, he's he's uh he's paid us uh, extra than the you know the ten thousand right. for the fifteen. So six hundred and sixty six dollars for the one off plaque, which has been designed and, and is in the printers at the moment. We can't get it off the old library, so there's gonna be a new plaque put here. So the old one will just stay. So it's it's been in production with the initial fifteen. So it'll be the same thing. Okay. Thank you. Um. So the gifts from Kyoto. Kyoto. Now that's uh, we've just got here library manager working on. Is that all? Good. So that's yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, and we met with met with Martin Tunley. Um, just see if I have any choice of you. Yes, can we, can we just see dates for next year so that that's a continuous, like you'll see, we've done August. What are you usually going to do? Three, three months. Uh, usually three, yeah. Unless there's something that pops up, and something popped up. But um, do you want me to do Tim and St John on fire as well? Because we haven't had them. Yeah, um, I haven't. So, so I, I know it's noted in the minutes that I've met, with, but I met with Firehead. Yeah. I didn't meet with the local guys. Um, um. So can, how about we set a date after Feb? Yeah. But let's let Marty get through the busy summer season and maybe look at March or something. 
But I want left on here. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Oh, yeah, I think you take it off and just program it because it just. No, like, just you'll forget. Had mine. Haven't had the other two yet. Had mine. Okay, so we've got that notice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's this workshop draft policy? We've spoken about that. Yeah. Oh, you've spoken about that too, Councillor Maru, too, around the standing for this council complaints process. Spoke about that earlier. We set. So, through this year, um, so I've talked with Elaine. Yeah. Um, it is Elaine. Um, so, so she'll link with you. So if you link with her and um, democracy services, they're going to bring in, um, I forgot his name, governance. Oh, Vern. Yes, Vern or Steve. So one of the two. Um, they'll bring in an external person to do that. Um, but you might want to build that around your other bits and pieces as well. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. And... And we can close that final action because that it has been presented. Is there anything else on there that anyone wanted to talk to? Yes, we'll move up. Yes, I was just going to address the Caravan Association signage that's taken off the action list. And it's just comes under our town for a week and liaising with them. Okay. So it's more of it's more that than a community board. All right. It came up in conversation, but it's sort of fallen under that umbrella. So and I can also report that since too much. Probably even the excuse we with us where that sign goes. So oh totally, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well it was um dealing with TDC, okay. the community board about when so. Okay, good. It's fine. And NZ TV. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Correspondence. It's noted. No one wants to raise anything in there. Um, next step democracy service staff will undertake their service. Okay, so that take that one offline. And then oh, so we've we've already moved in the second day. So everyone getting wild us. Right, they're moving. They're ready to move because it is quite six. Okay. So uh everyone accept the cheese report. Yes. Right. Anyone against? No. Carried. Right. Okay. We we've done. Oh, mm -hmm. financial. Sorry. Okay. So everyone's had a look at the financial summary. Can I? I'll I'll move to receive the financial report. Have a second. Yep, um, board member Hart second. And any discussion? Couldn't find any money this time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's looking in order. We all good. Uh, Councillor Maru. Yeah, um, just of note, so um, this, the strange will um, bring that report back in terms of potential use of surpluses. Um, I can't remember where Mr. Drummond got to with our revised budget and using some of that surplus potentially to fill some gap from some lesser rate for the LTP. I, I, it wasn't a lot, but I can't remember what it was, but it would be important that he, that Tony and Mike both um, both are party to that report, Mr. Kirby. Mr. Drummond and um, yep. this was some LTP notes, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was significant. Um, that's all I had up there. Yeah. You will have um, councils be able to give you some feedback once the consultation starts so that you can submit if you want to on the on the long term plan. Yeah. 
That's right. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, if we want to. <laughs> we have to. Okay. Okay, then. Um, yes, Councillor Murray. And the only things that Councillor Dialog put in, and the other thing to note is there'll only be a six month payment of the litter card. So there'll be, yeah. it'll be under budget as well. So there'll be yeah. some savings. There. That's right. That was noted last month. Okay. Yeah. No, so everyone's got to pick their own stuff up. End of that yeah. era. Keep up the street cleaner, mate. Be four times as much. Yeah. Budget. So we don't know who's going to take home. Well, no one Everyone's just going to have to pick their own rubbish up. Okay, so uh, any other points on financials? Okay, everyone okay to move? Yes. So Jeff, can I just go back to um, uh, the litter cart yes. and the fact that that's being removed and a comment that Councillor Dowler made about the state, I'm not going to reuse his words, of the roadsides. Can we do a, um, a good news story about the service that Nolan has done and that he was acknowledged for that and that would be good for our community to step up and start doing there, but to be tidy Kiwis, per se, as opposed to uh, the negative lens that we've heard this evening. Let's spin it and do that. Thank you, Nolan, because we all acknowledge the great work that he's done, but actually that leaves a deficit in our local community, and maybe we could be promoting everybody do their bit. Love it. We could all be Nolans in our own little patch, actually. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yes. I think you always know when the, the uh, contractors are going to mow the side of the state highway because you see the litter picker up as go through the wet. Uh, so that when the mower comes through, it doesn't chomp it up and spread it everywhere. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury as Tasman District Council. What's on the side of the road goes through the mower and it yeah. just and spread nice. everywhere. So you know, it's just, yeah. We can put we can just put Guardian, yeah, and then perhaps use line if that comes around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've got budget, we can do it. Yeah, Guardian would do that. To be fair for each year, you're more likely to get people to read it if it's a story than say that here, but you're assuming. Okay, so we'll just put an action, Emma, yeah. that um, maybe Deputy Chair and myself will liaise with the Guardian editor to get a story in. Then maybe we share those that post on our, um, our Facebook pages. Spread the word. Um, okay, so let's move second. I think I interrupted your moving, sorry. Uh, I think I already have a moved in a second. I just need acceptance from the board with the financials. Anyone against? No, I carried. Awesome. So it's against the cold of the room. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're not wearing enough clothes. It's freezing. Is that anything else? Yep. <laughs> just before I do that, making sure a couple of weeks away the show. Um, so before we close with Karakia, uh, I just want to thank you all. Um, it has been an interesting year and I think a real whirlwind. We've learned lots of stuff along the way. Well, I certainly have. And I appreciate um, all the conversation and um, support for the community that each of you bring in your own way, which is fantastic because this is quite a diverse board. So we're reaching different parts of the community, which is great. Yes, absolutely. So we don't need to all agree on, on um, subject matters, but it's good for us to put a point across. It would be very boring if we did, and um, it would not be democratic if we did. So thank you for all your contributions over the year. Thank you, um, Mr. Kirby, and thank you, Emma, Ms. G, um, also for, for, for you know helping us along the way and, and all the emails and banter back. So we really appreciate your, your support.
Uh, and also thank you to our public forum and um, board member Knowles for coming over the hill every month to support our community board meeting. We appreciate your input as well. Um, and yes, like I said, all the other staff and public that speak um, and, and join us monthly. So, he karakia whakamu tanga. Kua mutu a mātou mahi o tēnei wā. Manaki tia mai, mātou katoa o mātou hoa o mātou whānau. Ai o ki te aorangi. Thank you.